Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Today I want to take a look at Beam to update our situational awareness. This will be a short video, but we will also look at Beam price action to see if there are any technical clues. That said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. Beam recently restructured operations, emphasizing its ex vivo and in vivo sickle cell disease uh, programs. Now Beam 101 is the focus and the company anticipates reporting initial data for Beam 101 in 2024 uh, from its uh, phase 1 slash 2 of uh, Beacon uh, trial for uh, severe sickle cell disease. The trial aims to treat a total of 45 patients with an estimated primary completion date of February 1, 2025. Beam 101 is an autologous therapy. Beam 101 uh, has the potential advantages of eliminating the morbidity and uh, mortality of graft versus host disease uh, and uh, greatly broadening access to the majority of patients who lack a matched sibling donor. And uh, Beam 101 utilizes base editing to introduce specific point mutations that are designed to induce the expression of therapeutic non-sickling non uh, hemoglobin or HB. Beam 101 utilizes base editing to introduce specific point mutations that are designed to induce the expression of therapeutic non-sickling hemoglobin, that is HB. Beam 101 introduces point mutations in the HBG1 and HBG2 promoters, which mimic naturally occurring mutations that disrupt binding of B cell lymphoma slash leukemia 11A gene or BCL11A gene, a transcriptional repressor of uh, fetal hemoglobin or HBF. And individuals with these mutations have the condition known as hereditary persistence of fetal hemoglobin or HPFH and continue to have non-sickling HBF expression throughout their lives. Now let us look at their pipeline where I would like to make a few observations. I already uh, spoke to you about Beam 101. Uh, right now we are at the uh, pipeline page of Beam Therapeutics. And uh, I, I, I would like to say that um, uh, we have uh, Beam which is prioritizing development of Beam 302 in uh, uh, AATD, expecting to submit a regulatory filing in Q1 of 2024 for clini clinical trial. And a similar filing is anticipated in uh, first half of 2024 for BEAM 301. BEAM 301 targets the R83C mutation, the primary cause of GSD1 or uh, glyco uh, glycogen storage disease 1A. And uh, glycogen storage disease 1A is a rare disorder and its prevalence is relatively low. It is estimated to occur in approximately 1 in 100,000 to 1 in 200,000 live birth. As a rare genetic condition, GSD1A is considered a part of the broader category of rare diseases. And then we have a beam uh, 302 which addresses Pisi allele, uh, the main gene variant linked to severe AATD. And uh, Beam is seeking a partner for uh, Beam 201, uh, and uh, this uh, this particular therapy, Beam 201, is the first quadruplex edited allogenic CAR T cell therapy uh, candidate in clinical stage development, and the phase one slash two trial for the CD7 plus relapsed refractory. Um, uh, began in somewhere in August uh, with an estimated uh, primary completion date of December 2031. So August of last year and it goes on to December of 2031. It's a long range. Now let us look at the price charts. Here we are looking at the price chart for Beam Therapeutics. Each of these candles is a one day candle and uh, I'm going to draw some trend lines here connecting some uh, lower lows. Uh, let me connect let me take this one here and uh, connect some lower lows from here to here. So if I were to make this connection out here, then this becomes the line of support. So I'm going to make it a green line out here. So this is the bare channel because it is sloping downwards. Now let us put the outer bound out there. So I'm going to take it from here to here. So we have one two, three, four, five contact points. I'm going to fine tune it a little more. Let me pull this out a little bit. 
so we got multiple contact points so i'm comfortable to say that this is our uh, bearish channel so uh, things are not looking that great and also momentum is uh, uh, low and as the momentum is low i think uh, people are not that uh, hyper focused on beam at this point of time so it doesn't look very great on the charts and it has been falling uh, for quite a while now having said that so what can uh, one do with beam uh, at this point of time i think uh, one needs extreme patience with these kind of companies like beam for example because we don't see any monetization in the near term however it has got a great pedigree so that's a very big positive for uh, beam therapeutics and um, uh, the base editing again is a superior technology as compared to crispr cas9 so that is the second positive aspect and i think they have got decent amount of cash in their balance sheet so that should also be a positive but when we invest like especially the lot of our uh, genomic investors is not very good because uh, our biggest action was crispr therapeutics and it has already happened and now we have to wait to collect the gains uh, as crispr starts growing up but uh, when it comes to beam uh, we do not see monetization very close in the horizon to get excited about it so that leaves us with the option of studying the chart and seeing what are the trends in there and maybe if the wix is below 20 we can do a little bit of swing trade here and there uh, long term holders can try to dollar cost average the, the, that's another avenue open uh, mm -hmm. to improve the average cost of each uh, unit that you know, one holds uh, apart from that i do not see uh, much possibility of course if you um, if you have beam in your uh, portfolio at a lower price and you have been holding it for a while and intend to you hold it for long term then you can always sell some covered calls at a decent premium at a sufficiently safe uh, strike price so that you do not lose your uh, the chances of losing your share uh, is uh, lower and at the same time you get some uh, premium for waiting so those are the strategies that I think I would do if I was uh, holding um, Beam. Of course, everything I'm saying is my personal opinion, not financial advice. But all said and done, I think uh, we need to increasingly look at AI also uh, because we need some action. And we have been following genomics for two years. And our main action that kept us going was CRISPR therapeutics. Now with CRISPR already gone, uh, uh, already having done its magic with uh, CASJV, uh, we got to start looking at uh, other companies as well. And I'll be bringing out a quick short list of AI companies and we'll start following them. Uh, that will be a parallel stream along with genomics uh, and uh, hoping for the best. And friends, uh, remember, uh, starting the 1st of February, uh, this channel will no longer have any HIV videos. It's all going into the HIV Global channel. So we'll uh, turn out to be a pure investment channel. And our focus will be uh, predominantly on genomics and um, uh, AI. Those are the two areas that I think uh, I'd like to focus on because I also use the same research that I do here and share with you for taking decisions on my own portfolio. And I need to have AI also in my portfolio. I have already got a few components. I'll share the information with you in the next video. With that said, my friends, I'd like to say bye for now. And I'll catch up with you again in the next video. See you later.